Okay, boys and girls, we're gonna do something terrifying this time around. We're gonna go to a place where not all is black and white. A place beyond epic or fail. Something fanboys cannot step foot into, lest their eyes boil and minds implode. A place known as... The Gray Area. Area. Now, before we talk about Infamous 2, we need to talk about two other games. That's the first Infamous and Prototype. Both these games are open-world, sandbox, third-person, action shooty fighties in which you take on the role of an ever-evolving superhero. Or, given the great deal of civilian casualties, you're more of a super asshole. Since these games came out around the same time, there were inevitable comparisons, debates, flame wars, holocausts, etc. Every asshole who thought his opinion mattered claimed one was better than the other. And they would have been right if they had picked Infamous. <laughs> now I know automatically half of you will claim fanboyism because Infamous is a PS3 exclusive, and you know, it's all racial. But I got reasons, bitches. Reasons. And just for the record, I do think Prototype is a good game. It's fun. It's just not nearly as good. First, and not all foremost, the graphics in Infamous were better. And that's saying a lot, since the game had some pretty annoying frame rate and pop-up issues. Not to mention I played Prototype on a PC. But more importantly, the core gameplay in Infamous was balanced to perfection. I mean, really pitch perfect. Where Prototype was a mess of overkill. In Infamous, each attack didn't just do a different amount of damage, more importantly, each move had vastly different uses. Regular shot is instant but weak, arcing grenade shots use gravity to your advantage, weak force blast defensively stun a wide group of enemies a la force gun while using the environment as a weapon, sniper shots, etc, etc, etc. Awesome shield, too. What made this setup so pitch perfect was the fact that even when fully leveled up with all your abilities and all your abilities max out, you could use all of them on the fly without ever pausing to change your loadout. It was one of the most intuitive control layouts I've ever seen, and it made for grade A core gameplay. Prototype, on the other hand, went the other way. They had so many moves and move sets that you found yourself constantly pausing to switch between them. And as fancy and amazing as your various methods of death were, the game was just too damned easy for it to really matter what you used. On top of which, you locked onto enemies, making everything more or less automatic. That's really an issue I've always had with Grand Theft Auto. Let me aim, bitches. I can fucking aim. See, look. Look at me aiming. Now I know some people are gonna ask how I can condone target locking in these games, and at the same time have a problem with it in these games. And if you can't tell the difference, then there isn't enough time in Emmett Brown's workshop for me to explain it to you. Even getting around in Infamous required skill, some level of accuracy. Whereas in Prototype, you could just run, jump, fly anywhere at any time. I guess what I'm saying is that overpowering your superhero isn't by default a good idea. It's why more people cling to Batman than Superman these days. When you're invincible, it's just not that interesting and requires less skill. Prototype was a great game to watch. Infamous was a great game to play. Look, some of you know I, I'm a movie director, and in the film world, the core would be listed as... Everything in life is location, location, location. That is, assuming you're not George Lucas. Location translates in video game land as gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. Or the more scientific, play over display. Not to say that Infamous was perfect, unstable poppy graphics aside, you had repetitive missions, a lack of enemy diversity, the whole good and bad angle that decided which abilities you evolved seemed borderline retarded since the only thing that separated a good guy mission from a neutral mission was that they called one a good guy mission and the other a neutral mission. See the difference? Yeah. Also, since you can't run up buildings like in prototypes, skyscrapers can get annoying when you have to climb this much. And while a lot of time and detail was obviously put into Empire City looking unique in form, the urban aesthetic got repetitive. And above all else, an awful case of who the fuck is shooting me syndrome. Okay, Infamous 2. There's a story, and big thing coming, and people, eh, who cares? Unlike the urban sprawl of Empire City, you're now in a New Orleans clone, which means no skyscrapers. Also noticeable is a major graphics engine overhaul. Gone are the pop-ups of your and frame rates of your mama. <laughs> Increased are the enemy types and with many more monsters. Ch chicken? Added are extra surfable cables for transport and new electrified pipes. Different areas actually look different aesthetically. Holy shit. 
Thankfully, the previously noted who the fuck is shooting me syndrome for the first game has been downgraded to who the fuck is a rocket launcher. Cause that bitch needs to die. <laughs> missions are less repetitive, although there are many side missions that you'll constantly run into that get old fast. And you know golden rule number one? Holy shit! Of all the franchises to pull a level editor out of their ass, this was the last one I expected would actually do it. So, bravo, I guess? So is this it? They took just about everything from the last game that needed perfecting and done did that. Well, just, let's keep looking. Oh, what's this? Ice and fire attacks. Uh, hmm. I mean, the whole purpose of this guy is that he's an electrical conduit, you know? Like, that's his element. You know, he absorbs energy from electricity around him. It's not something he can really do with, like, cold or heat, absorb it. Now he's less coal, more Pokemon. I mean, what, is he supposed to be like Aang now? Is he the Avatar? No, the real Avatar. Fuck you, Shyamalan. The twist is that you suck. Furthermore, if you pick the fire path, you get this stupid forward dash. But if you go ice, you get this awesome, totally useful all the time ice jump. You think you're deciding based on attacks, but you're really deciding between useless mobility and crazy useful mobility. Hardly seems fair to leave that to chance. And there seems to be a lot less variation between attacks this time. Sure, there are technically more attacks, you can split grenades into more kinds of grenades, got rockets and shit, but like, your basic attack isn't even instant anymore. It's just fancier and more powerful and slower, which kind of makes it more like your other attacks. And my old useful force blast is now uselessly weak until it evolves into an elemental blast, which is more of an attack than any employed strategy. What the fuck, assholes? You're just turning everything into direct damage with different coats of paint. That's what Prototype did. At least they didn't pause the action like Prototype did, because that would really be a game changer. Oh, come the fuck on! Really? Really? Not only did they muddy the waters on strategy by making your attacks less varied in their core use, but they added so many new ones that now you have to stop constantly in battle to switch between them. Fail! Fail, sucker punch, fail! What's worse is that your super useful and strategically necessary shield from the first game now occupies the same button used for other important shit that you kind of need available all the time. Effectively taking away your shield as though it weren't even there. How do you fuck that up? And why does the shield now zoom in to remove all the situational awareness that the player has? Here, look at me, an infamous one, all up in my awareness. And unlike your mega ability from the first game, which you got at the end and still could only drop really like one at a time, you now have multiple kill everyone attacks that you have from pretty much the whole game and can fire repeatedly and recharge abundantly. And when you're nearing the end, when you finally mastered all the surfing, jumping, hover mechanics that make you feel like a real superhero for the first time, bam, a motherfucking energy tether. Known to you as a hookshot. This takes everything you've learned, everything you've been building up to, and flushes it down the toilet. It's a spoiler, plain and simple, and even worse, it's not really faster than getting there manually, so it's kind of a pointless spoiler. Yet again, I know some of you are already on my ass about why a hookshot is acceptable here and not here. And again, if you can't tell the difference, then you probably shouldn't be operating this kind of machinery in the first place. Put all these things I just mentioned together and you end up with a difficulty that, even on its hardest settings, don't really compare with the first game. It's not that they didn't give the AI enough, they just gave me too much and not enough hands to juggle. Ugh, so close. Much like the first Dead Space, the first Infamous had something else other than quality. And that's potential. When a new IP comes out that's this good, you hope it's a prelude to greatness. That's exactly what happened with Dead Space 2. So why didn't that happen here? I know some of you were saying, yeah, but even if the fundamentals got axed a bit, they still improved on like 10 other things. And this is why I don't do numbered scores, like most sites. How do you average graphics with story with controls and get a number? How are any of these things equal? Some of these things are window dressing and some are fundamental. Many people consider chess to be the greatest game of all time. How do you think it would fare if you had to average in story? Maybe the role reversal wouldn't be believable enough because the king's such a pussy. Okay, people, I know the gray area was a scary place and I promise not to bring you back here right away. And with that, here we go. Madonna Award. Cause it's still good, right? Right?
Ch- chicken? 